guys. Me and my aunt just wanted to thank you for all the wonderful subscribers out there. Yes, we now have 100 subscribers and I am so happy. So happy. So happy. So happy. So happy. All right. Yeah, I'm happy. Uh, anyway, if you are new here, um, I want you to like, subscribe, you know, the usual. Now wait here until you do it. Did you do it? Yeah, you did it? Great. Good job. Anyway, I was totally calm, you know, when I realized that we hit 100 subscribers. Yeah, I was, I was calm. A hundred subscribers. What's going on, Wana? I'm Sinai. And I'm Atishani. Welcome to Growing Up Getting. Today, we have a special guest. Who is that special guest, Dante? She's my friend, Auntie Stephanie, who is of Haitian descent. And we are going to talk with Auntie Stephanie about something else that's celebrated on January 1st besides New Year's, but Haiti's independence. So welcome, Auntie Stephanie. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for being here. So side note, everyone, it's common in the West Indies to address your elders as Mrs. or Mr. or Auntie or Uncle. Um, so that's how we refer to our elders here on Growing Up Gooding. So that's why we're calling Auntie Stephanie, Auntie Stephanie. She's not <laughs> blood related. Um, and that was very confusing for me when I got older. But uh, <laughs> um, that is something that's custom to our culture. Is that the same for you, Auntie Stephanie? Um, yeah, we actually, I grew up calling all of my mom, all of my aunt's mom. Um, so Ooh, it's not ah. common to, you know, we would, the, the, the word for aunt or auntie is like ma tante or tante, tante. So like, we'll, we'll say that when we're like, um, calling somebody by the, you never call a, an adult by their first name. It's right. Not, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> at all. I tried it once. I learned the hard way too. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> auntie Stephanie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, I am a creative placemaker. Um, that means that I create space and, and design creative solutions for systems change in community development. So um, we do this through storytelling. So what I do is I like to um, either storytelling or uh, experiential, it's a fancy word for events. <laughs> <laughs> um, and essentially the purpose of any kind of storytelling campaign or place activation would be to tell the story of a people, a community um, in order to affect systems change. So that's what I do professionally. Um, it allows me to be an artist but it still allows me to have a very positive impact on um, on whatever community I'd like to have an impact on. So I, I like the freedom. Um, beyond that, I'm a yoga teacher, a rising yoga teacher, but I've been practicing for about 10 years. Um, and I host wellness, wellness circles and other types of programming through my own creative placemaking agency, The Melanin Project. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. You are pretty, uh, pretty dope. Um, we're happy to have you here. And I'm pretty sure Sanai has never heard that profession in her life before. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for explaining it. No problem, no problem. Creative placemaking is only like 30 years old. So it's a very new industry, but the work is not new. Mm. Cool. I think all black people should like be in creative placemaking. <laughs> <laughs> We just cel celebrated New Year's, mm -hmm. um, January 1st, which is also the day that Haiti celebrates its independence. Yes. And um, Sanai, do you remember when we talked about the Haiti flag and the Haitian flag in our flags episode? Uh, yes, I think it was Port-au-Prince. That's mm -hmm. the capital, very good. Okay. Steph, let us know why we should know about Haiti. What is so great about its independence? Tell us about it. 
Oh my gosh, where do we start? So 217 years ago, um, uh, August 12th, 1791, um, I believe is the, is we have August is considered uh, called Black, Black August for us because that was, uh, everyone remembers January 1st, 1804, but the war for independence started back in 1791 with a voodoo ceremony um, in San Domingue, which was the capital of Hispaniola. Um, and it was held in an area, in a swamp, an alligator swamp um, called Boac, and the ceremony is called Boacaima. And what happened there was significant because it was 21 indigenous tribes of black people from everywhere. Um, a common misconception about the Haitian Revolution was that it was, it was Haitian born black indigenous people fighting for freedom on that island when that isn't entirely true. Um, all of the people who gathered to fight for independence didn't even speak the same language. They came from everywhere, Benin, Togo, Nigeria. They came from other Caribbean nations. Some of them were Muslim, some of them were Christian, some of them, um, most, um, a majority of them practicing indigenous African spirituality uh, practices like voodoo. Um, and at Boakaima in that August of 1791, um, there was a woman named Cecile Fatima who served as uh, what we would call in Haitian voodoo a mambo, which means a priestess. And she prepared for, I think, uh, three years, it said, in order to host this spiritual gathering for all of the people there. There at that site, they uh, called on their ancestors and the elemental forces that their ancestors had were, had you know worked with and worshipped through the practice of voodoo for encouragement and for energy to help them take on the revolution that they knew they wanted to start. So um, you know it was a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of great energy conjured up that day, <laughs> and. Um, what they did afterwards was they began a more systematic approach to starting the revolution. So there were many prominent people who um, played a significant role in us getting our independence that whole 12 years up until January 1st, 1804. We had figures like Makandao, who was um, who was born a slave too. And I believe he came from another, he was sold from another island, but I'm, I'm not sure on the island right now. But he taught, um, his his uh, knowledge of botany and herbs, he educated um, slaves on the on the various plantations on herbs that would that would poison their masters. And for those twelve years, they may have kiss, killed off maybe six hundred um, uh, white enslavers just through the use of plant medicine. Um, so that was one. We have um, Dahomey soldiers who were women. You know, you've seen we've all seen uh, Black Panther. And I'm not sure what the woman's character is, but the, the military women, they, they were significant and a nod to the Dahomey warriors that existed. Um, and so these Dahomey warrior, warriors were also, some of them were also caught up in the slave, the, the slave trade and landed in Haiti at that time. Um, we have two prominent leaders that a lot of people know of, Jean-Jacques Dessalines and um, Toussaint Louverture, both of whom were generals. Um, Toussaint Louverture kind of led the way for, for Jean-Jacques Dessalines to come through and do what he does. And the woman who trained Jean-Jacques Dessalines, before we get to him, was an ex the homie warrior. So when he, when he grew up on his particular plantation, she trained him on how to fight. Um, as often kids were trained how to spy because they were small and they could climb trees. Um, you know, it, the people of those 21 indigenous tribes that got together to conspire for freedom used and weaponized everything. Even the meeting in the swamp that day was, was held at that swamp because the white um, enslavers could not navigate the swamp. So all the black people met in the swamp. Um, and in order to combat the language barrier, a fun fact that I like to share is that they were each given seven rocks. Everyone was given seven rocks and they were told every day to drop a rock. And when you're out of rocks, that's when you know that's the first day of us starting the revolution. Now, the fun fact comes in that uh, a slave on, I'm not sure which plantation, but um, their, their slave owner, I think uh, pissed them off a day early 
hands <laughs> and the revolution started a day early because this particular slave couldn't wait till the seventh day but if you want more background on that there's some other um there's some media that i can share with you later but um fast forward to after many many years of organized um organized and very highly strat strategized um, efforts to win their freedom on January 1st, 1804, Haiti, whose name is Aiti, whose real name is Aiti, which means lands of many mount of high mountains. Um, and that's a Taino name, Taino being the name of the, of the Aboriginal people that were there on the island. Um, we declared ourselves the first um, uh, independent and sovereign nation from any entity in the universe, right? Because remember, um, these were people who were practicing um, all kinds of African spirituality practices. And so their connection to what was happening here, this oppression, was more than just a physical one. For them, it was a spiritual oppression as well. There was, you know, there's a lot involved in that. And so they recognized their freedom from any entity in the universe, um, which I think is significant. Um, as per the Constitution of 1805, Haiti then went on to bar, uh, you know, kick all enslavers out of the country. They um, allowed a small Polish community to stay there because those Polish soldiers had assisted them in fighting off the French. Um, and uh, then Haiti set its sights on liberating DR um, and then also sending arms to countries like Venezuela, uh, Colombia. Um, they had their eyes on Guadeloupe, like all the French, the French owned um, countries. So uh, Tobago, like all of these other small islands, because their idea was since they established themselves as the first um, independent empire, not republic, they, um, they, any land that was kind of, would be kind of not assumed into this empire, but you would be protected under the same provisions that Haiti was protecting itself under. So if Haiti had guns to fight off, um, you know, what potential enslavers that might come back and try to reinstitute slavery on the island, um, you know, they would, they would launch a military attack. So they armed other islands. They were ready. That's where we built, um, you know, the Citadel, which is that large fort that we have um, in Haiti. It's still there standing today um, where the, the cannons, the missiles, we were ready to pretty much blow anyone out of the water <laughs> if they tried to come back with the slavery. Why this is important for everyone is, be, is because the Haitian Revolution stopped the slave trade in the United States. Um, many people who did not expect, this is the only slave rebellion, right? Where successful slave rebellion, as there were many, there were many, but in, in such a scale, we have not seen it. And um, um, because it stopped the trade in the United States, um, and it also put, it just froze slavery in general. I find that um, the Haitian Revolution should be considered a black national holiday, to be honest. I think it, it demonstrates for the entire world what collectivism in the black community can do. Um, I encourage everyone to look into the Haitian Revolution because you will find your own ancestry there. Um, like I said before, the original people who fought for freedom, this is 12 years that encompasses 21 indigenous tribes from all over the world. This isn't, this isn't just, you know, Haitians doing this for Haitians, you know? Um, and so because of that, because of that one fact, it makes it incredibly important for me to make sure that I understand it so that I can help people understand that it's their revolution as well. Um, in the Caribbean, like I said, the, there were other countries who, slaves that were born in other countries that also assisted in, in the fight for liberation. We have a figure named Dutty Bookman that some people may have heard of, um, who was born in Jamaica. And his mother, who was a Maroon and uh, a rebel, they sold him to Haiti be in, because they wanted to punish her for starting rebellions in Jamaica. So um, his, he was given the name Dutty Bookman because he was Muslim and he carried a Quran on him. And when his, his capturers asked him to relinquish the book, he refused, so they burned him with the book attached to him. 
So Dutty Bookman literally translates to dirty book man. That's literally what it translates to. But I bring up his story to illustrate that he wasn't even born in. He belongs to Jamaica. You know what I mean? And and we don't see no difference in him being Haitian, Jamaican. We don't see no difference. We venerate him the same way we would venerate Toussaint or venerate um, Makandala, venerate Jean-Jacques Dessalines because everyone played such a significant role in that, um, in the road to independence. So, that is I know that was a lot. <laughs> That was a lot, but it was good. I didn't Very know nice. Half of that <laughs> Very nice. I'm so glad I can help. Yes, yes. I love, I love, I love it. I think, um, I love it. I love it. I, and whatever other questions you got, just lay it on me. <laughs> I, um, I learned a few, uh, at least one new point that I learned about the, there was a few that you definitely shared. Um, mm -hmm. but researching for this the reason for like the louisiana purchase was also because of haiti's revolution that's right so that's right you, you know louisiana the states and i um in america would not be there if not for the haitian revolution that's right, that's right. Like, they couldn't afford to keep it because the revolution was costing them so much money and it was a prized place like haiti provided i think 60 percent of the what was it, tobacco? Sugar, tobacco, sugar, rice. Yeah. In addition to that, Haiti is, the, the capital is called Port-au-Prince. Port it literally, Port of Princes, Haiti has, has ports so like it made it made trading very easy he has oil gold there was uranium sulfur i mean all kinds of natural resources and at one point its nickname was the pearl of the antilles yes, because of all of the rich resources that it in many cases still presently has which um explains other things <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, so much to be explained. So um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think in Haiti has been downplayed a lot in history and it's important that, you know, we we know this stuff um, so that we know, like our history is more than just, um, because we're all descendants from Africa, it's more than just uh, Barbados, it's just more than just America. It's, Right. It's all black history, so I think that's important. Uh, Sanai, do you have any questions for Steph Auntie Stephanie? So she kind of answered all my questions because <laughs> um, I only that's have good. two. But I'm going to ask the first one I had anyway. Sure. Um, Hades, what does that really mean? Like the word Hades, what does that really mean? So, so Haiti was given to the island. And um, I can't, the name, the, the, the date escapes me, but it was originally called Aiti, which is the Taino name, Taino being the indigenous people that were there. Then the Spanish came in the late 1400s, early 1500s, and that's when they renamed it to Hispaniola. Oh. Um, then the French came after that, and they decided that they were gonna split the land Right, and so they kept the same capital, San Domingue, but mm -hmm. they called this side Haiti and this side remained, um, the, the Spanish continued to call it Hispaniola for a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, the whole island was Hispaniola at one point. Aiti, the word Aiti means lands of many mountains, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's a very mountainous place. Haiti has very dense, yeah. I mean, very rocky, like mountains that have lush vegetation, so lush it's dark. Um, yeah, and a lot of the like charcoal in the in the in the the uh, a lot of the charcoal is mined from the forests and things. So um, it's that was the original Taino name. Um, these days, I like to refer to it to IET as much as I can, um, mm -hmm. mainly because phonetically, I think Haiti is Haiti is great because that's what we've been calling it. But you know, we don't hate ourselves. Yeah, so sometimes I'm like, I'd rather just call it what the indigenous people called it, which is IET. Mm -hmm. And all many, many people in the Caribbean call it IET first before they call it Haiti, actually. I think that's more okay. of a, a United States thing. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I was actually, my, uh, that, that was a question I was about to add on. Um, which one do they call it? Like, which one do more people call it? Um, so, thank you. <laughs> awesome. So we know the history of 
um, Haiti's independence. Now, present day, what is, how is it celebrated? What is um, the traditions? Like we just had our independence in November. We made mm-hmm. coffees on our episode, um, which mm-hmm. is very traditional to our independence. What is traditional for Haitians? So soup, jus, Ooh. moo, okay? Pumpkin soup, okay, <laughs> guys? It's a thing, it's here, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> January 1st, so um, Jean-Jacques Dessalines' wife, uh, she's a, I got her name here because it's a like a five-part name, but uh, Marie Claire, she decided to gift the nation as a, um, as a gift for independence, a soup that would help keep everyone nourished and healthy. And everyone was to consume this soup regardless of like uh, socioeconomic status or whatever. In fact, there's a saying that you haven't had soup jumu unless you've shared it. So everyone makes soup from the, the, the provisions they've grown in their yard. The original soup has no meat. It is, it is vegan. It doesn't have um, any animal products in it. Um, and it is made from pumpkin and, you know, if you have potatoes, carrots, things we call beef you know, which means just life, essentially. Um, And everyone is to participate in the soup. If you make a, to this day, every Haitian household will make soup. And it doesn't matter that you've had soup at your house. When you go to someone else's house, you have to have soup too. That's all you eat on January 1st is to share it. Um, And many people don't know why they run out. It's because we've, it's not meant to to stock. So if you kind of don't catch it, you know, you don't catch it. (laughs) <laughs> but we do that um, on January 1st uh, just to commemorate the, the establishment of, of Haiti as a free nation. And on January 2nd, we have a day called Ancestors Day. Um, Ancestors Day is to commemorate not just our ancestors that died in the fight for freedom in all of those many years, but it also to honor the military and the other generals that we may not know who gave their life during um, the fight for liberation too. And usually in Haiti, there are large um, military processions, parades, you know, parties, people are making big meals. People, if you're growing uh, animal agriculture, not growing it, but if you're like you have goats and, and cows, you might kill your prized goat, you might kill your prized cow, and then that's when you turn it into a meal for everyone to eat. Um, it's a very communal celebration in those first two days. And here in America, we still do, do that. That. Um, at my house, we make we make liquor, um, cremas, which is that some people know coquito. You know, we make the thicker, you know, uh, savior, extra delicious version. <laughs> we also make a, a cremas, if you will, but it's called mm-hmm. um, puncha crema. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we still celebrate it with sharing large meals. Um, that soup jumu is a staple. It's a gift. It's a gift that's 217 years old. Um, and we, and it came from the first, the first empress of Haiti. Because remember, Haiti was established as an empire and not a republic first. So our first empress was the one who gifted us. And her name is Marie Claire Eros Felicity. Oh, wow. It's a long name. I told you it was a really long name, so I had to find it. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So, with a quick question, um, do you like eating all that pumpkin on um, Independence Day? So, on actual Independence Day, I love it um, because it's it's more than just the soup. It's kind of like an opportunity con- to connect with people too because you have to share it. But um, and then in addition to that, people make it different ways. Like some people make their soup sweet, which it's new for me. I've never even had it sweet. And then some people make it extra spicy. That typically is kind of like how I like mine. I might put a little like you know a little something else for in there. But <laughs> but people make it in many different ways. Like some people make it vegan. Some people put chicken. Some people put cow cow like beef in it. Some all kinds of different meats so you are literally having a different experience every household you go to the soup never tastes the same um so that's exciting but there's a there's a limit there's like a schedule to this like you soup jumu the first day bomb soup jumu day two bomb day three hi you know you could maybe still have the soup day four five still having soup That's not it. That's not it. It's on that long. 
It can go because people we don't make like small pots. Like people are making Dutch ovens, you know, of soup, and then you're collecting soup. People bringing soup to you. There's soup everywhere. For me, usually, you know, there's so much because I have aunts and stuff in the area. Well, that like by 6 p.m. that day, I'm pretty much good on soup. <laughs> I want a hard, I want like a sandwich. You know, I want hard food at that point because I've been drinking soup all day. So I don't usually get to like day three still drinking soup. Some people put it with rice and beans and they try to have it like a kind of like stew and, and, and rice. Some people try to get away with that, but just drink all the soup you can in the first 72 hours, maybe a fourth day, maybe. But you definitely, it definitely can't go past four or five days. Okay. And one more question. Um, is there any like fancy drink you have on Independence Day? For me and my family, it's probably just like apple cider, but is there mm -hmm. any like, special drink? Well, it's more, most likely gonna be that cremas. We do, we do make cremas for the holiday season in general, and it helps that it's January 1st, so we have it from Christmas or, <laughs> Uh, we do make because the celebrations I think continue until about January seventh, um, and so we cremas is usually the staple. Although sometimes people make liqueur, my mother makes liqueur. What they'll do is um, boil down sugar, star anise, cinnamon. Um, you might get a food coloring that you like of some sort, and then you you're pretty much making like a confection and then adding alcohol to it, and you boil it down again, and now you have carafes full of like flavored colored liquor with your with your favorite alcohol being the base so i've seen both of those those types on the table outside of just the staple baba coup you need haitian rum on the table okay okay <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like all of those all those drinks are for the adults um, yes probably be, yep. be apple cider for for you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe a little fresh. Uh, we like uh, what is that? Tamarind juice. We like we like tamarind juice. Uh, so we can have some of that. Well, to be more fancier, I could have the grape apple cider. Mm -hmm. That's it. That sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds and like a plan to me. Auntie Stephanie, do you know how to make any of these items? I so this year actually my I sat with my mom and an aunt and we you know they took me through the cremas process um which is when you see it you can appreciate the cremas that much more because it's literally like you know um I'm gonna use the creole word I, I don't know why I can't remember the English word right now gage means to uh, great. great thank gage. you girl <laughs> Well, that's the Creole word of the day, gaje, right? So, um, you know, you cut up the coconuts and like, you know, they took me through that whole process. And I know that I can put plant-based milk substitutes to it, which is great. Um, so that's the only one so far. The liqueur, I've been watching them make that since I was a kid. And I still am not really sure what happens. <laughs> I'm still not. Like I almost, I, I always cut out at the same spot. Like I see, so it takes a while for the sugar and such to boil down with the cinnamon. So I think I kind of like leave whenever that's happening. And by the time I come back, the drink's done. So I have no idea how that one is really done, but cremas I'm okay with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I have to invite you back to help us make something in the future. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let me know. And if I don't know how to do it, I know a few people who do. There you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. So now I hope you enjoyed this because I've been very excited. About it. I'm a history major, so just naturally this is like yep. my stuff. But <laughs> this is this is fun. <laughs> what do you think was your most um, fun fact learning today? What stood out to you most? For me, yeah. um, about the pumpkin soup. I <laughs> did not know that they had um, pumpkin soup um, for their Independence Day. <clears throat> Sorry thought it was either um chicken or <laughs> something else i don't know um that was a very cool fact to learn and i yeah i actually liked learning about the history of hades too awesome so i think unless you have any other fun facts to share with us on teach that 
Um, maybe just some resources. If you want to look up some things on your own, um, there is a documentary called 1804, The Hidden History of Haiti. It's about two hours long, but it is so deliciously enjoyable if you are a history aficionado. <laughs> um, there's also a book that I have here. So this book is called The Black Book. Ooh. Right, and it's a it's kind of like an anthology of all black things all over the world, and the book starts with Hispaniola, Ooh. so you can learn um, anything that you're you're interested in about black history, but particularly this island. You know what I mean? Like it starts here, and I think that that's really significant. And if you want to be able to do like your own highlighting and such it's a good book to have so those um and um and the last book is for you Sinai there is a um Haitian historian her name is Baina Bello um we just actually interviewed her a few weeks ago for another project and it was very exciting she wrote a book called Sheroes of the Haitian Revolution and all it is is a book of women because the revolution was started and facilitated largely by women. And so the book is dedicated to all of the black women who have fought, who fought for independence as well. We had women generals in there too. So like, I, I find it very encouraging for me at my age. And I can only imagine had I had a book like that at your age, I might've, uh, I don't know what I would look like these days. <laughs> So um, I think Wakanda, like uh, Black Panther was the first time we saw like mil army, military, like, you know, women in that capacity. And um, this book makes it normal. Like you, when you see the, the things that women were doing in order to support these men and lead their own efforts, um, it's, it's incredible. So it's called Sheroes of the Haitian Revolution. Okay, let me look that up right now. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, girl. <laughs> awesome. So thank you again, Auntie Stephanie, for joining us. Uh, I just want to put it in perspective that IAC was independent in 1804, um, mm -hmm. whereas most of, um, like Barbados, our independence uh, was 54 years ago. So right. this is 217 years, as you said, of independence. Um, right. And that's pretty remarkable and something that we should definitely uplift um, for people to know. Yeah, so absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We, thank you for having me. Thank you for enjoying our history, okay? Because it's ours, it's all ours. I may be a direct representative, but y'all family, so, you know. Right. <laughs> it belongs to all of us. And you know, like, I, you, you have to wonder, uh, Haiti's independence was in 1804 and other many other islands 50, 60 years ago. Had they had they not stopped the arming that we were doing of other nations, had they not stopped, you know, our trying to keep, you know, you know, had they not stopped what was happening, yeah, I think all of the Caribbean would have been looking at anniversaries around the same time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Wow. Yeah. Well, we love we love all the histories as is. And the one that we're creating is even better because of circles and conversations like this. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. All righty. So um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, Sanai, what should they do? Like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell. Yep. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. See you next time. Bye bye. One, two. Yeah? You thought that was a good idea when I said let's record? Interesting. I'm sorry. I had to. No. I don't believe you had to. I wanted to. <laughs>